Am I all in here? Can you hear me? It's all good? Damn, you're looking fine. I'm not good. You're a sight, you're a sight for this dear man's eyes. I love that. Okay. How you doing, babe? I'm doing okay. Um, I uh, I don't know, like the personal stuff is I'm like 13 months almost sober and smoke free, um, which uh, I'm prepared to uh, deviate from in the interest of our being able to have a cigarette at some point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I've been I've I, I've been relatively alcohol free. I mean, I'm drinking iced tea. I stopped, I, I stopped drinking solo. I was drinking a bit solo during the pandemic and um, <laughs> didn't take much to put on some poundage, darling. And I like to dance and breathe in the same moment. So, plus my book comes out in two weeks and I like looking good. <laughs> or fresh anyway. Can you hear me okay? I'm not hearing you at all. Oh my God, I, baby, is that Flipper? Is that Flipper? <laughs> I used to have a bong that size and it was called Flipper because that's exactly what she did. <laughs> and then my friend Paul had a bong that was like the three footer. And I said, you you're crazy. I mean, doing a cylinder of that, what would you do? And he did, he just went, passed right out. I said, yeah, that's what that three-footer does. <laughs> you know, my favorite part of these things is always the before. Because you always get the good stuff before we start. You know what I'm saying? And that's the stuff, that's the, when I get the good pictures of everybody, it's before we start because everybody takes the starting thing serious. Yeah, yeah. At a certain point, I'm gonna have to say like, welcome to the something or other and we're fine. Yeah, we'll do that, but let's take one more minute. Um, I have, I, you have to apologize. Let me see if it's my volume. I'll just, my volume's up. I'm having a slightly hard time hearing you. Um, my mic is not working for some. Yeah, it's very, you're very muffled, I'm afraid, and, and that will not do, darling. Is that any better? That's much better. It's much better. How's the quality? Is oh it? Oh my God, that's uh, the quality's better, and it's much better. Let me hear you. Let me hear those dulcet tones one more time. To be or not to be, that is the question. Oh, yeah, you are, you are yes. for this thing you could, hours of that Would you tell me sometime how to use? I have the same mic, not the blue. I wish I had the blue. The blue. I have, I have a silver bullet. Yeah, the blue, uh, the blue's actually not working. I'm running this through like a webcam that I've got here. Um, no, I had, that's the, we're having the same problem because I got one of those um, things, one of those mics, yeah. and I tried running it and it wouldn't, it was kerfucked up. So, I mean, I said, so the hell with it. I, my voice carries, you hear me okay, yeah? I hear you perfectly, yeah. Well, that's good. And there's no echo? None whatsoever. There's um, there's a, a bassy resonance, but no echo. I can go with the bassy resonance. Uh -huh. I'll pretend I'm Lauren Bacall. You don't have to pretend, just in habit. For just thank you, habit. thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> that was classy as fuck, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are we were talking about KFB, yes? KFB and, and readings in particular. Um, for the this. The series is called Talking with the Organizers, and it will be, yeah, broadly about poetry readings, um, what makes for a good one, what uh, what makes for a writer who's easy to work with, what what are the, some of the challenges, what have the challenges been in terms of the transition online, um, a word about land acknowledgments, um, like how do you feel about them, and what, what good do they do, um, and then what have you got upcoming, and we'll kind of keep it to uh fewer than 30 minutes i think oh yeah does that sound all right no i'm i'm engaging and entertaining but 30 minutes is <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll, shoot, we'll shoot for 20 if we can um i wanted to congratulate you by the way on the without form um that i see behind you there uh 
I saw a copy recently um, and it's a beautiful, impressive project. I couldn't help but think like, how the hell did this happen? These are extraordinary, hardcover, hundreds of pages. You know how it happened? We said yes. Mm -hmm. It was like when, when, the, when the chapbooks had first come out, I fell in love with them. I, I, and, and you know, that whole series was one chapbook per book of the Bible. So, and I, and I have, she has revelations, of course, please. But long story short, these came out. And then um, Kyle said, Kirby, we're thinking about um, putting this out in a single volume. I said, you're thinking about it? He goes, I go, that's audacious as fuck. I'm, I'm all in. <laughs> you know, let's, 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 I've been wanting to do something with you. Let's, this will be our first co-publication. And... Mm -hmm. But you're right. It even exceeded. It, it, I think it exceeded both of our expectations. And then, and then to have the thing virtually sell out prior to prior to print was just yeah. crazy. So amazing. Yeah. But but again, you're right. Hardcover, almost 800 pages. I mean, blah blah blah, and 50 copies. Yeah. So, and to find out that all of that was doable and and in quality and I like the slight almost metallic blue tint to the pages which are gorgeous and okay are you ready because I don't want to take up too much of your time darling you're a busy man sure um tell me when all right welcome to episode one of talking with the organizers presented by antler river poetry formerly poetry london this week featuring kirby of knife fork book kirby I'm very grateful for the gift of your company this evening uh, darling, I don't say yes to just anybody, and I and thank you for having me. So, a pleasure. So, our friend, poet, editor, and publisher Jim Johnstone has said, "I simply cannot imagine the Toronto lit scene without Kirby and Knife Fork Book." And while my views don't necessarily reflect those of the reading series on whose behalf I've got the opportunity to speak with you this evening, it seems to me that you should receive a salary from the Canada Council for the Arts for all that you do for poetry in this weird country. We're very fortunate to share together for. As we know, not only is KFB Canada's only all poetry bookshop and a publisher of chat books, broadsides and full length collections of poetry, it's also a necessary stop for any poet fortunate to be able to present new work. And I wonder to begin Kirby, given the great number of them that you've hosted and participated in, what makes for a great poetry reading? Setting the stage. Um, once the stage is set, then it's a matter of allowing it to happen. Mm -hmm. But the stage being set is making certain that um, there's an invite, a proper invite, um, a welcome, um, tending to needs. You know, early on, I, my whole thing about doing Knife Fork Book is I wanted poets to be treated like gold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, and that was, that was so that when we were doing the readings, it was this, you know, we, we, we set a very, very pretty stage. And, um, so the thing about, and the thing about other readings that I've attended, you know, in terms of like starting on time or not starting on time, or there tends to be kind of a chaotic lingering sort of thing going down mm -hmm. and I come from, from a theater background darlings when we say seven o'clock we are starting on time and it took a whole year for people to get used to especially poets who were used to just strolling at any time mm -hmm. um it took almost a year for people to go holy shit it's KFB we have to get there but all it took was the intention of setting that up and I think that also adds to the to the experience and to the respect for the work and for the reading and what we're doing here. I mean, it's different, it's different. It, it also, we were never in a pub. So it was very, very different to have um, a reading where the focus, believe it or not, was actually on the reading. <laughs> and that was essential to, to KFB and to what I, what I wanted to see happen mm -hmm. because I'm a little bit older and as much as I like enjoying a good draft as anybody, um, I came for the reading. <laughs> and I have a little, I have a little window that that happens in. And, and for me, 
of a reading. Um, the stage is set and we're here for the reading. Let's do the reading. We can all go out and do something afterwards and enjoy ourselves, but mm -hmm. let's give, take heed and pay attention to what it is that we're presenting, which is the, the work itself. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what, I think if anything, that's really what stands out with, with, with when, when we ushered in our, our own series. And I'm, I'm still, that's still how I feel about it. Beautiful. Um, so what from the perspective of an organizer makes a writer easier to book and work with? Um, what makes the process of imprinting the stage uh, from the perspective of somebody who's going to participate in a reading with KFB um, as easy as possible? Um, it's, 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 I know it might sound crazy, but it's as simple as, as me being able to say, all of your needs are going to be left after here, and and I make it easy. I make it easy. I'm playing host, so I'm the one that's making certain that everybody is, you know, welcomed and here. And um, but I also have a way of of putting readers and poets at ease. I think I think a lot. There's a lot of mental build up that a lot of poets have if they're not accustomed to reading their work whatever and that becomes the kind of oh oh my god i'm reading tonight that sort of chaotic thing and i'm going darling we have the opportunity to hear you tonight okay. <laughs> that's what's going on so and i i used i learned this um with regards to job interviews and it was always oh a job interview and i'm going they have the opportunity to meet me Mm -hmm. And I see that as what it is. I mean, here's here's the opportunity to actually meet somebody whose words mean so much to me, or somebody who I haven't heard before that I'm really interested in what they're bringing to the event, what they're bringing to the space. And often, what happens with with that being the intention of the space, I get exactly what I've come for, which mm -hmm. is that it, it's in the hearing, right? Too many. It's not about. It's not in the reading. It's in the hearing, mm -hmm. it's in the listening. So part of the setting of the stage and making certain that the poet is comfortable, they came to hear you. This isn't about um, you necessarily you reading as much as you being heard. Mm -hmm. So that's really, I mean, that excites me to no end. And I think that also ups a level, level of, of comfort when you have a stated intention, right? Mm -hmm. So otherwise, it's like, what are we doing here? Or, oh my God, it's my turn. There, are, there, there's new readers, and they have to get their feet wet. But um, I, I, I make certain they know the delight is that they're here, and we're going to hear them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, there's something about this um, sense of a, of coming to a reading as an audience member. Um, expecting to listen with a kind of acuity and intensity and bringing that willingness uh, that really nicely um, takes the pressure off the poet. And I'm wondering whether there's an, an, an analogous or analogous um, sort of practice that takes place as a reader of poetry when you're encountering the text on the page that, that the work can only be as impressive as you're prepared to listen to it and listen to it at depth. Oh, I think that's I think that's true in the reading of work, in the hearing of work being read. You know, re remarkably, when I was, um, you know, while Wen has her um, her poetics classes on Sunday afternoons, and the it's two parts. The first part is hearing everybody in the room take turns reading aloud a poet's work, and then the second part is writing. Me. I go because there's nothing like sitting in a living room among poets and hearing a poet's work like O'Hara or you know, Schuyler being read aloud and being read aloud to each other. Mm -hmm. That, I, maybe that's where I, I, that comes back from my early church rec room days reading the Bible for that matter. But I, I do love hearing voices hearing voices read to me aloud. There's a comfort to it for me. Um, I'm not saying necessarily with the material or the terrain, but the human voice um, 
resonates, vibrates, is connective. So that, and, 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 and that's why I have to read work often over and over again, because who knows what space I was in to hear it or receive it at a certain time. So part of that is the reader's experience or re-experience of the work. I haven't heard this today. I haven't read this today. What am I going to find? I mean, Kavafi, I've, I've communed with Kavafi for 50 years. Um, and I still find the riches in, in, and still find the newness in rereading. Like when Evan Jones' um, new translation came out, oh my God, I said, oh my God, do I know you? <laughs> It was a, a whole different fleshy encounter with with new translation of the work that is so dear to me. So I hope that, am I, am I addressing somewhat your question? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so what's the easiest part of organizing a reading and what's the most challenging um, when you're setting the stage? What presents obstacles and, um, and, and which obstacles are the most uh, sort of significant, if there are any? The um, easier obstacles, okay. Um, I guess the, e the easy part is when someone responds in kind and says, yes, I'll do this. Mm -hmm. So it's always, that's always a welcome moment. And the exciting part for me is um, like when we're putting together our fifth anniversary coming up the first five days of October mm -hmm. and putting that together and and then having it come to the stage is set. Now the stage is set because you know we have one, we have most of it's going to be virtual still, but we have one day of live readings, which is happening in our new space at the Great Escape, which is this gorgeous old raw kind of barn garage space in a laneway, mm -hmm. and it's I can't believe this can still exist in Toronto. And we we just here it is. We're, that's where we're going to be. And um, so that day, it's because it's it's partially outside and in some cases entirely outside. We're going to do some live stuff there. Um, and it's a gorgeous setting and it's going to it's so beautiful in and of itself and photogenic. I just see that's what I mean by by setting the stage. It's finding or creating the space that's that lends itself to the reading to the voice to the eye to the there's a softness to it lighting is significant really really important a proper sound during the sound check all of that is just the technical stuff that comes with it um the most difficult moment for me is the half hour before it starts mm -hmm. it's 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 oh my god is anybody gonna show up <laughs> you know um that sort of stuff. And I remind myself, darling, you've done all the work. Mm -hmm. The stage is set. Let this thing happen. Just let it happen. Let it unfold. And um, so, but I, I guess it, I've been around for a bit. So, so it's a little easier for me, perhaps, but um, it's still, it's still, an investment and involvement. I, I want it to go well, right? Mm -hmm. Like everybody. But see, the truth is, is that the poet reading wants it to go well as well. Mm -hmm. And see to it that that's not going to become an obstacle mm -hmm. is what's important, you know? So we make certain they know, sound check everything. Here's how you're going to sound. Here, you know, get familiar with the space, all of that. Um, because we have a set time to start, people can arrive, people arriving early can test things out. And then that way, you know, please don't rush into one of my readings. And in fact, there was a, there was a time there at KFB where once the reading began, there was no entry. Right. Because again, in fairness to everybody, in fairness to the poet, to the readers, to the people who have who made a point of getting there on time. Yeah. I'm not trying to, not, I'm not a bitch about this. That's not it at all. It's the intention of the space. Mm -hmm. And it's what we're doing here. And we're not a bar. And yes, it does interrupt when people just, you know, go about. So 
Oh, I will be a bitch about that. Okay. Yeah, I am. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you go to the theater, that door shut. There's no more admittance. Right. You know, the, this, the reading has started. This is what we're here for. So that's what it is. The phrase uh, is coming to mind that, uh, that, that sacred spaces need to be protected with a door and that door maybe needs to have a lock on it. Otherwise, what difference is it between that space and sort of the world in which we're milling around casually in the street outside? I mean, mm -hmm. it needs to be ordered in some way, I think. Yeah, yeah. You just, it, it's, yeah. I think it helps. It also lends itself to, it also creates that level of comfort. Mm -hmm. in terms of knowing um, you're not going to be interrupted, there's not going to be distractions, any of that. I mean, again, I understand there are certain readings I attend that I've enjoyed attending that it's a pub setting or whatever, and there's a degree of sound and distraction and all of that. Mm -hmm. But I already know that ahead of time, mm -hmm. right? So I, I, I expect that. It's different. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Not my favorite, not my favorite venue, but but I I, I enjoy going to see bands mm -hmm. <laughs> in those venues. So and the, the peanut shells on the floor and the somebody's bumping your arm and that's all part of the experience, you know. I mean, it's different from a poetry reading, though. Yeah, well, I I, I we're looking at how we're going to do poetry readings from here, um, in terms of I think there's always I think now there's always going to be. Uh, a streaming component as well as uh, a live right. component. Really? Um, there may be, I don't know if we're going to be live streaming in the same moment that we're doing the, the live component, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. I would always record live, so that would be ad identical to what was experienced in the, mm -hmm. in the actual room space. There's just things to consider. I know, I know for a fact in terms of accessibility it's a major plus you know to have the streaming happen in the same moment as the live event and i think that that's probably where we'll go absolutely and i want to ask you about that transition uh into a sort of digital sphere and it's good to hear that you're going to consistently producing be producing events that take place online but before that i was wondering if if you'd say a few words about your thinking through land acknowledgements uh, from your position as a host in Toronto amid the Six Nations Confederacy and how you feel about land acknowledgements and what besides convention continues to motivate you to offer them and what do you feel they can do for an audience um, in that setting of sort of storytelling that can maybe ground what is it what is it that you find uh, that's necessary and essential and uh, how do you think and feel through uh, land acknowledgements as a host. Here's my beef. My beef is if you're going to give a land acknowledgement, then that has to be not by rote. Mm -hmm. it, it's not just, oh, this is something we have to do or something that we have to get through or let's whatever. Um, then why give it? I mean, um, one of my favorite land acknowledgements was uh, the loud, the loudmouth lady Catherine Hernandez was hosting an event at a Writers Writers Trust, and when it came to the land acknowledgement, I think she said something like, "I'll paraphrase, Jesus fucking Christ, give the land back already." You know, it was it cut cut to the quick. Let's just cut to it. And there was a recent. Um, experience uh, or we had a recent reading as well when new information came out about the residential school stuff yeah. and i'm going you know give give no different than what you're there to begin with give the reading it's due mm -hmm. give the land acknowledgement it's due make it yours make it personal don't just go out just don't you know scripted is better than not at all mm -hmm. but find a way of of making it yours yeah and, what, and, and a connection that matters to you right um janet janet rogers 
really fine storyteller poet. She has a new storyteller series with um, uh, indigenous um, and regardless, I love her and she's a great, she's a great performer. And um, I asked her personally, I said, you know, can you give me pointers, listen to me, give me some pointers, share with that. And it's just a matter of uh, connecting like everything else, mm -hmm. making, ma making, making it matter. Yeah. So that's my feelings around it. Otherwise, it, you might as well have it recorded as it is in some, I was at a theater space. I went to Stratford for the first time, went to go see Three Tall Women. Oh my God, one of my favorite LB plays. Long story short, their record, actually their recorded band acknowledgement was more heartfelt than many, many that I hear. So it's possible. Do you remember anything in particular from it that struck you or? Um... It, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, they made it specific to Stratford to telling stories for many, many years and including years of um, indigenous storytelling where they made it personal to the, uh, to what they're doing. To, mm -hmm. to what they're about, right? So I think that's, uh, I think that's the key. Lovely. Yeah. So um, uh, I guess the question of land acknowledgement bears on the question of our transitioning online uh, through reading series because this sort of cyberspace is the, um, is the, is the sort of territory of enormous corporations that are feeding on our data rather than um, maybe physical land. Uh, um, uh, this is my ham-fisted transition to ask you about what the transition uh, online has been like for you and for your readers and for your audience, um, how you felt about it, how you've been thinking about it, if any surprises came up for you. Um, and yeah, if you wouldn't mind reiterating why it's important to continue um, with online readings, at least as a component of what KFB does. Well, I'll share, I'll share a few things about this. Um, when once uh, once COVID hit, it was it as you recall about two weeks prior to uh, National Poetry Month, and we were in our grand spanking new space where we had sixty poets in sixty days, and we, we had a, a enormously robust schedule for that Poetry Month. Mm. Um, and not, it, it's not an easy thing to see all of that gone. All, you know, because I know how much it took to set the stage for that to occur. It's not a small thing. It's a, it's a big time for a poetry bookshop. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, we, we weren't prepared. We didn't, there was no, no, there was no thinking about moving it online just yet. So we lost about two months. I think our first online reading was in sometime in June, maybe July. Um, but when COVID hit, one of the things that I took upon myself was I wanted to be as much of a rudder, an anchor through this for as many people as I could, poets and the community that I care about so dearly. And I wanted to show some, we're still here, we're still here, right? And um, not a small choice, but I also know how, pre I, this isn't my first plague. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is not my first. Right, right. So I, as difficult as this been, has been and continues to be, and uh, yeah, I thought there's one, one thing I can do is stay present and be a rudder. Mm. And uh, I feel that has been, uh, and I'm delighted because I feel that we, we've succeeded with that in many ways. There, it's crazy. I'm only gonna say this, I'm not gonna name names. I'm simply gonna say this. I was surprised that Reading, reading series that completely shut down, no notice, no nothing. They just disappeared 
shut down. These were the reading series that I know for a fact were, were, were funded. Um, we don't have, we don't, we're not funded, but I wanted to make certain <laughs> that we continued and that poets still had an opportunity to connect and read their work. And uh, I'm just gonna say I was surprised and uh, I was surprised that that was the case. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why I'm not gonna, it's not a, it's not a, oh, they're bad and we're good. That's not where I'm coming from at all. I'm curious what was behind their decisions around that. Mm -hmm. And I stand by ours. Well, I, I refer to my earlier comments about Canada Council for the Arts needing to provide you with a salary, I think for having, having been such a runner uh, through this period and also for all that you do for poetry. Um, and I wonder, I wonder whether you'd say a few words about this uh, this upcoming partnering with uh, Great Escape Bookstore and uh, the celebration of of five years, um, uh, from the first to the fifth of October uh, upcoming. Um, a, a, a couple of things, I, I you know, there's only so much I can do, and one thing I'm not is a grant writer. Mm. And who's got the time for that anyway? And I know that for for many many organization was essential, I would welcome, absolutely, I would welcome grant money. But I also know there's a, there's a catch there as well. Um, I don't want to be in a position where I'm only going to do something if we receive the grant money. So mm -hmm. part of what, why even KMP came into existence was, was to show what you could do without money. <laughs> and now we're under, believe it or not, we're about to celebrate our fifth anniversary. And, you know, I will say, um, thanks to our loyal base, and we've got a, a, a substantial Patreon base, and you can also support us at patreon.com. I know that um, the next 12, the next 25 new patrons that sign up $10 or more, while Wen has given us 25 copies of her new book to give away to those Patreons. And it's, I'm, I'm grateful for all of that love and support. We just had our first public pop-up sale this past Sunday. It was like a homecoming. It was so great to see even masked faces. It was wonderful to be on the street. It was wonderful to, uh, to feel a sense of familiar and, and homecoming. And, uh, and, and people came to my poetry and thank you so much. It, it, really was a lovely thing. And now to go to your October, our fifth anniversary, we, we actually are opening up in two new locations here in Toronto. KFB East will be at the Great Escape Bookstore, which is in the beaches. I think the address is 957 Kingston Road, but they've got a lovely website, Great Escape Bookshop, bookstore.com. Um, Katja is the owner there. Her and I just hit it off and and have a similar idea about, um, oh, just about being in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, she has this glorious, the bookstore is fabulous. It's got that gorgeous smell and all of that. And we're gonna have our own section in the back of the shop, right by this deck, going on to a garden that goes to this back space, this barn back space, which is, crazy pretty it's so beautiful so um that will be uh that's what's happening there and then i'll be i'll be there um on specific dates each month so that we have an exchange the kfb exchange with me there as well then we're doing a kfb west which is going to be part of midnight mass books which is at capital expresso in parkdale uh 1349 queen street west all of this is happening at our at our fifth anniversary opens at our fifth anniversary on October first. Um, the lineup for the anniversary, October first, is the launch um, uh, of the new issue of Not Your Best, which is the queer ass fuck issue <laughs> that um, that I edited. <laughs> this is the beautiful beautiful work by Philip Hare. Philip Hare, who um, he 
designed my book cover for, for Poetry is Queer as well. Him and I have been collaborating on stuff for decades. Mm -hmm. And um, there's, a, there's such a great lineup in here. Um, oh my God, I love these photographs by Don Pyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. In fact, Don, 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 we're doing something at in London with you in, in March. Um, then, uh, one second. So this will be happening um, virtual on the first to open opening night mm -hmm. on the Saturday. Um, there's two slots. The one o'clock slot. Ryan Fitzpatrick will be on with um, Ryan Cap, who's a new poet who has a new work coming out from Frog Hollow, mm -hmm. and um, Amanda Murpaw has a wonderful new chapbook from Ann Strother. So they're going to do a one o'clock reading space at three o'clock. Um, our new beautiful new KFB chat book. It's the Tinder Sun, it's Jennifer Lovegrove. This is so much fun. And um, one of my favorite, there's, we did the titles um, on a separate page from the series of sonnets. And my favorite, my favorite title of one of the sonnets is Hot Mess Michael. <laughs> <laughs> So Jennifer Lovegrove is, is reading with uh, Dale Smith, Dale Martin Smith, whose new book is Flying Red Horse. That's happening at three in the afternoon at The Great Escape. Then on the, um, the Sunday, it's entirely um, virtual and it's a full day we're having. We're doing our KFB gospel hour in the morning. The Secret Revolver is gonna warm us up with a beautiful set. And then the beautiful without form is being officially launched with uh, Ben Robinson and uh, Kyle Flemmer as well. This is that gorgeous, this gorgeous volume of Erasure, which is the entire Bible um, erased down to the, the constellation of numbers. I don't know, I'll bring it up close and let you see, I have an idea. Mm -hmm. Each page is its own constellation. So I'll be with those with those poets and then, oh my God, in the afternoon, Chad Campbell from um, Manchester will be reading from his beautiful new collection called Nectarine, which is out from Via Kill. So he's reading from Manchester. Adam Soul will be reading from their new collection as well. And then, um, oh my Lord, there's something going on in the evening and I, I can't. We have a night event as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'll link to it in the description of the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be, it'll be, I'm just, um, we'll, we'll come back to it. There's, we have a night event as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I can't, I, I'm too excited about what was our, what I've already shared to, to remember. Mm -hmm. And then on the Tuesday evening, I'm launching Poetry is Queer and with Wa Wen, who is opening, and uh, Damian Rogers is hosting. And, that purple love chunk. I get that purple lunch love chunk tomorrow to hold in my hands. The book's <laughs> arriving tomorrow. That thing's got a spine. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't wait to feel the girth of that spine, baby. It's a purple love chunk. And uh, and, and uh, we're, we're, the official launch is happening in Harborville, uh, Nova Scotia, live in this lovely little schoolhouse that uh, is in this fishing village and Philip Hare is the artist who does my who did the cover he lives there with his partner and they arranged that I just thought life is too good life is too good so that's what's going on oh my god I just remembered who the evening is Shoot. it is um Selena Bowen Dallas Hunt Molly Cross Blanchard with Liz Howard is happening on the Sunday night. No, I can't believe I blanked that out, but that's what's going on the Sunday night. So that'll be uh, virtual as well. Yeah, yeah baby, there. yeah, baby. Hello. So that's Kurt, our From my marrow, thank you for all that you do to contribute to and facilitate and promote and make available this timely and timeless craft we're fortunate to enjoy. And thank you for your time this evening, uh, endlessly. Thank you. Uh, it's thank you. just such a joy to speak with you. I got you, take good care. Bye for now.